Physics is supposed to be a theory about objective facts in our universe. But surprisingly, or not so surprisingly, physics is filled with probability, most notably in quantum mechanics. The interpretation of probability has tortured philosophers since its invention. This devil first entered physics at the hand of Maxwell and Boltzmann. In this video, we will dive into this fascinating part of the history. It was the middle of the 19th century and the heat engine was a hot topic. Scientists were working vigorously on explaining thermodynamics concepts such as pressure and temperature. One popular approach was the kinetic theory of gases, which predicted that molecules would have to move at extremely high speeds. But the scientists noticed a paradox. If gas molecules have such high speeds, why do we not immediately perceive the smell of an open perfume bottle at the other end of a room? Experience shows that it obviously takes some time for the fragrance to be noticed. German physicist Rudolf Clausius proposed that gas particles do not move freely but constantly collide with others, changing direction randomly. Because of this, particles delay the perfume's scent from being noticed immediately. In April 1859, Maxwell read Clausius's paper, and his imagination was immediately hooked. The sheer scale of the process was astounding. Maxwell himself put it this way, If you go 17 miles per minute and take a totally new course 1,700,000,000 times in a second, where will you be in an hour? In his calculations, Clausius assumed that all molecules travel at the same velocities. He knew this could not be precisely true, but could not think what else to do. Maxwell then took this task, studying what would happen if molecules had different velocities. However, it is not easy as there are billions of molecules, and deriving from Newton's law would be almost impossible. Maxwell realized that, instead, one would have to take the statistical approach, and that is how probability entered into fundamental physics. Maxwell made the following assumptions. 1. The diameter of the molecules is much smaller than the distance between them. 2. The collisions between molecules conserve energy. 3. The positions and velocities of the molecules are initially random. 4. The three components of velocity are statistically independent. Making these assumptions, he derived what is now called the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution of molecular velocities. With this, one could then compute the probability that a molecule chosen at random would have a particular velocity. Maxwell distribution is a probability distribution. So, the height doesn't correspond to the number of particles. Instead, the area under the curve gives the number of particles in the respective speed range. For example, here is the distribution under different temperatures. Raising the temperature causes the curve to skew to the right, increasing the most probable velocity. However, the area under the curve remains unchanged since they are all probability distribution curves. This new theory of Maxwell predicted something that seemed to defy common sense. In particular, it predicted that gas viscosity is independent of its pressure. Viscosity can be thought of as the internal friction of a gas that causes drag on a body that moves through it. One might expect that a more compressed gas exerts more significant drag, but Maxwell's theory predicted otherwise. Even Maxwell himself was surprised. A few years later, Maxwell and his wife Catherine attempted to do the experiment themselves in the attic of their house. Catherine's main work for these experiments involved keeping a fire continuously stoked for hours to produce steam from a kettle and so maintain a constant temperature for the gases whose viscosity Maxwell was measuring. Together they showed that Maxwell's prediction was correct and that viscosity doesn't depend on pressure. Maxwell did recognize his wife Catherine's contribution. He wrote to his friend Peter Tate in his usual humorous style, my better half, who did all the work, is involved in other research. When she is done, I will let you know her answer to your inquiry. The inquiry was about experimental data. This was Maxwell's first venture into the gas theory, and it was a banger. His work drew admiration. 
particularly from continental scientists such as Clausius and Kirchhoff. But even these admirers failed to see the full significance of what Maxwell had done. But there was a young man in Vienna who did. His name was Ludwig Boltzmann. Boltzmann was so inspired that he spent much of his long and distinguished career developing the subject. Boltzmann was particularly interested in the entropy and the arrow of time. Everything that happens around us, from the melting of ice to the expansion of the universe, raises a big question. Why do natural process occurs in one direction and not the other way around? Famous philosophy question, why is the past different from the future? Why is there an arrow of time? Because the fundamental laws of physics have no arrow of time in them. The answer is entropy and the second law of thermodynamics. The universe used to be more organized, lower in entropy. The whole history of the universe is just entropy increasing, disorder and chaos developing all around. We're all going to die. That's the... <laughs> it's not your fault necessarily, but you're contributing to the disorder and chaos all around. This was a central puzzle in the 19th century as scientists were developing laws of thermodynamics. The second law, in particular, introduced the idea that entropy always increases in time. This time, asymmetry suggests a fundamental difference between the future and the past. Young Boltzmann was immediately hooked by this question. In 1872, Boltzmann introduced H-theorem to explain the irreversible nature of thermodynamic processes based on the mechanics of atomic particle collision. Here is me in the central cemetery in Vienna on the grave of one of my heroes, Ludwig Boltzmann, Austrian physicist, one of the greatest. Boltzmann developed the kinetic theory of gases in which you are interested in the statistical properties of the gas, like the air around us or uh, in any kind of situation, in which you don't want to look all the precise positions of the molecules of the gas, but the statistics of it, like the curve that is there on the right, on the top. Just below that curve is the Boltzmann equation, which describes with extreme precision the evolution of the distribution of particles. Think about this, because this is an amazing achievement. The particles all around us, these are all molecules, billions of billions of them, all bouncing on each other in all kind of chaos, like in a in fury, crazy, really. And in spite of all this mess, the Boltzmann equation can predict with great accuracy what will become of these statistical properties, and you can use it. Boltzmann further devised the formula for the entropy, S is K log W, which is now written on his grave. S is K log W, W here is the number of configurations in which you can arrange your gas. For instance, if your gas is confined in a half box, this gives you much less possibilities than if it's spread all around the box. How many uh, less possibilities? It's a huge, huge number, much, much bigger than these attoseconds we heard about recently. <laughs> <laughs> or than the, or than the uh, cra uh, debt crisis, of course. Now, Boltzmann also gave practical formulas for this. The formula you see at the bottom, minus integral f log f, is a practical formula for computing the entropy. This is a lot for a single man, and at the time of Boltzmann, not all his ideas were well understood. But later, his followers held him as a hero, like Einstein, Perrin, or Smolchowski, people who used his work to prove the existence of atoms, that now we are know how to... However, Joseph Loschmidt pointed out a paradox in Boltzmann's argument. If the underlying mechanics of particles are based on Newtonian mechanics, and therefore reversible, how can an irreversible process like the increase in entropy arise? To address Loschmidt's paradox, Boltzmann published a groundbreaking paper in 1877 clarifying the profound relationship between entropy, probability, and the number of microstates of a physical system. Boltzmann was able to show that it was not that entropy always increases, but that it increases with extremely high probability. By introducing probability, his equation provided a statistical interpretation of the second law of thermodynamics. During the 1860s and 1870s, Boltzmann and Maxwell took turns breaking new ground, and Boltzmann continued after Maxwell died, putting the science of thermodynamics on a rigorous statistical basis. Although they never thought of themselves as such, they were a splendid partnership. It is fitting that their names are now immutably joined 
in the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution of molecular energies.